Hi, welcome back to Bexhill West. I'm James. So today's video is going to be yet another little experiment. Today I'm going to have a go at making some cardboard carriages. Now the reason behind this is I need some rather peculiar eight foot wide carriage stock to run at Bexhill West. Many of you will know that the line between London and Hastings was for all sorts of complicated reasons uh, ended up with the tunnels being too small and so the coaching stock was narrower than was used elsewhere in the southern area. Now given that my eventual aim is to try and use my model as a photographic diorama and I particularly want to recreate the Rother Valley Rail Tour of October 1958 which used some of this narrow rolling stock so I really do need to um, get on with it and get them made. Now those of you who have been watching this channel for a while will know that I have had various goes at it in the past I've experimented with 3D printing and casting in resin and nothing has really floated my boat. So this is just another little experiment with another technique. Hopefully I'm going to learn something. Hopefully there'll be something in this for you to learn too. So let's get on with it. We'll begin by cutting out some parts and then afterwards we'll make a little jig and have a go at putting these things together. Now one of the things I've done in the past is I've put together drawings for all the different uh, bits of coaching stock that I need. So I've drawn all the bodywork up and the plan here is that these will fit onto Hornby underframes or rather that was always the plan but that plan may have changed slightly and we'll get into that maybe towards the end of the video. So here then I've got my drawings uh, my basic sort of working models that I'm going to use. So we've got different varieties of coaching stock. There's break third, eight compartment third, seven compartment first. There's all sorts of different configurations of these carriages and I'm going to begin by separating the component parts out that are going to make the brake third carriage which incorporates a guards compartment. So on the screen here you can see I've taken the basic elements and I've designed this as a series of layers that are going to lay one on top of another. And hopefully when these are glued together, these are going to provide the window frames and various bits of detail and incorporate a pocket so that glazing material can be slid down inside the sort of a, a cavity in the wall. So hopefully the glazing will be held, won't be visible sort of on, from the inside as being just sort of an ugly bit of plastic glued on. It should all look quite neat. So next up we're going to laser cut this. Now I've got the, the, the file all sent to the machine and I'm using here stencil card. Now experience has shown me that stencil card lasers really very well indeed and you can cut it at ridiculous speeds. It really does cut nicely. In fact it's possible to cut it too fast and not have the acceleration and deceleration of the laser head um, properly calibrated versus the speed at which it's cutting and that can cause lines to be a bit wonky and corners to go a bit funny. So some care needs to be taken and some experimentation really when cutting this stencil card to get the best out of it. Anyway I'm just going to go with some basic settings and we'll see how we do. This is all an experiment but if it ends up looking quite good this could be a technique which I develop a little bit further. So then these are the parts and if I remove the waste there we go you get an idea of what we've got so we've got four layers for each side of the coach and they stack together something like get which way around these go now something like <laughs> I can't remember anyway I've got one that I made earlier here we go so let's have a closer look at this see if I can focus on it nicely so this is the four layers that I've just shown you being cut out and they've been glued together now I've incorporated this fret along both sides of the pieces and that's to enable me to assemble this in a jig. So the next stage is to make the jig and I think we can have some cheesy 
YouTube Music for them. Now I'm hoping it's fairly self-explanatory how this jig works. You can see me there, I'm inserting the first layer and I'm pressing that over the little dowel pins which are being used to register each of these layers. Now this second layer you can see has openings at the top and that's to allow the glazing material to slide in. And I'm just pushing the plastic lid on there just to help compress that down onto the first layer. Now what you can't see, because I've edited it out, is that I'm gluing these together with some 3M display mount spray adhesive. So I've done that off camera and then I'm just putting these bits down, the adhesive being on the lower side of each of these layers as they're stacking up. So with the pieces in the jig, I fit the little thumb screws and clamp it up nice and tight and wait for the glue to go off. Simple as that really, not much to it. So here is one of the carriage sides, uh, still on the jig, and what I've used is a stencil card, which is a, like an oiled manila card. Now that's pretty robust and takes paint really well. However, I want to seal it up a little bit. Now this technique is as old as the hills and in fact many of you watching this will have remembered using it back when Noah was a lad. So what I'm going to do is seal this up using shellac but because I'm too lazy to mix up the shellac flakes with the meths and sort of dilute it all up and get it all nice I'm cheating and I'm just using French polish straight out of the bottle. Now this stuff I'm assured is just pure shellac with a, an alcohol base. So we're going to paint this on and see how it does. But before we do, I mentioned the 3M display mount spray adhesive, that's what I'm using. Yeah, I could have done it all with shellac and uh, it's a technique I've used in the past. Some of you will have used it no doubt and some of you might be new to you, whereby you paint all of this with shellac and when you've got a nice coating of shellac, you can paint the surfaces with meths and that will soften the shellac up and then put the bits together, clamp them up nice and tight. And that's brilliant, it goes off like a welded joint. But like I say, I'm cutting corners here for the sake of this experiment uh, and I've used the spray glue, which I think is going to work just as well. So I've got some of the shellac or French polish in a little tub here, get some on the brush. And just paint it on. Now this can go on quite thick and it will soak into the card so I'm not going to be too fussy about how I go about this. Just going to dosh it on. Hopefully you can see it soaking into the card. 
Now a lot of what looks like it's soaking in is the alcohol in the French polish evaporating. Now this brush I've used it before and it's got a bit of dried up stuff on. After I've used that for a few minutes that will soften up and it will go nice and brushy again. It's a bit, bit hard but not to worry you get the idea. Oh, that's better the brush is working a little bit nicer now anyway there we go that's we can dosh that on now what will happen is that will soak into the material you know, I'm going to rotate it back try and get that reflection away there we go um, we can paint that on it will soak into the material and appear to dry really quite quickly and we can get a second coat on this and a third coat and uh, and build the the shellac up or the french polish up and on my little examples i've been doing here i've needed sort of five or six coats and you can tell when you've got enough because it stops soaking in and you'll you'll start to leave brush marks and at that point you can leave it alone let it sit for 24 hours or so for all the alcohol to evaporate away and you're left with quite a nice tough surface. So here's one that I've applied the shellac to and it's now not soaking any more in and hopefully you can sort of see the the darkened surface there in comparison with the edges which I haven't painted. Now this is ready to go what I'll do is I'll give that a light rub down just to remove any sort of brush marks or whatever and the next stage is to give that a coat of paint and all I've done is a quick coat of grey primer. Now I'll show you a little close up of this. This is it's worked out really rather well. I'm really pleased with it especially as this is like a first go. I've not really perfected this yet but you could see the details there, the, the engraving around the carriage doors and what have you. I've still got the ventilators to cut out and add but I'll add those. Now I don't know if we're going to get this at this camera angle, in fact I might insert a close-up shot but in the top edge here I've got the cavities that have been created to take the glazing. So if we have a look at an example that I've sort of partially finished you'll see how that works and, and how the glazing is going to work. So this is a hastily sort of thrown together example. And you can see I've inserted some scraps of plastic here. Now these were little bits of packaging that I found lying around in the studio here. So they're, they're a bit grubby and uh, but they're enough to show how that glazing is going to work. I've got a piece here and that slots into that little opening I just showed you. And that's the glazing secured. Obviously these would be trimmed off. Now this I have thrown together just quickly for the purposes of this video um, and you sort of see the effects from hopefully the inside. There's no sort of glazing visible, it's contained within the, the coach walls. Now when I put this together I experimented with um, some of the internal planking and again I, I hope that the, in fact let's try focusing this. I don't know whether the camera is going to pick up some of the detail of the door here and the planking on the end there. And that's come out quite well so it's inspired me to add the planking onto this surface here. Now these were like a light green colour and I think that that will all be visible through the windows if you want to look up close. So that's all going to be done and then again just for this little mock-up um, I thought well it ought to have some seats. So I've 3D printed some little seats here. Now these aren't really ideal, these are a first class seat and this is a third class carriage but for now they'll do the job. So the seats will go in, I think these might actually be a little bit big but not to worry I can change that. So we've got a full set of seats and they look quite good. So there we go, this concludes almost the construction of my little cardboard 
carriage experiment. It's worked out really nicely. I'm really impressed with the detail, the surface finish. Um, it, it, it's pretty good. Now this has been thrown together really quickly just for the purposes of this video and to suss out whether or not the technique is any good. Uh, I think it is and I'm definitely going to explore it some more. Now I've still got the ends to do, they're all designed and I've just sort of run out of time today but they're, they're going to go on um, and I'm undecided yet quite how the roofs will be formed. I've got one idea which is quite straightforward but it's now occurred to me that perhaps I can incorporate a little printed circuit board with all the lighting and stuff on and maybe house the electronics for it all in the guards compartment. But as a basic principle, cardboard, there's a lot to be said for it as a material. It's certainly cheap and had the advantage that I'd already got the drawings already prepared so it hasn't really taken me much effort to convert them into this using the laser cutter. What I'll do to wrap the video up, I'll put in some more uh, bits of video showing the sort of the compartment walls and stuff being assembled and some of the more detailed design work that I've done on the computer because that may well be of interest. Anyway we will return to this subject when I've got the ends done and having been successful with this so far it's got me rethinking the underframes and perhaps I won't use the Hornby underframes after all and there's a good reason why and I'll come to that in another video. Anyway, until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio.